Hello everyone! How exciting! Today we are starting episode 11 with Life with Gina, Becoming a Better You. We are in a four-part series of breaking through generational curses. And I'm so excited to be able to share with you guys. I've been just really excited all day, yesterday, and all this this week when the la last episode uh, was over, I kind of rewatched it and I was like, oh my God, there are so many beautiful things that I am able to share with so many people. And I'm so excited to share about breaking through generational curses because I know, I know I learned so many things when it happened and when I started learning about it. One of the corrections I wanted to make last week was that there were, um, I said that I learned about generational curses when I was in my late 20s. So I'm going to take that back and say I did it when I was in my early 20s. I started learning about generational curses. I am looking at all the people that are joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited. This is Life with Gina becoming a better you. I'm really excited about just learning um, learning what God is doing, learning what he's doing, learning how uh, I can you know, show more about what God is doing and how God is really revealing to me and revealing to this world how they could become a better, a, a better version of themselves. Um, so I'm going to do a little, a little review of what we did last week. And I am going to start talking about how to break generational curses. So one of the things that was crazy to me when I was in my early twenties was learning this actual terminology of breaking generational curses and i was like what am i cursed i mean what is this i got all spooked out about it right nobody wants to think oh my god i'm cursed so when i started identifying what is a generational curse there's usually something that goes on in your family over and over again and there's really no explanation why for instance you're sick and the doctors don't know what's wrong. Um, you have emotional issues when there's really nothing emotional going on around you. Um, you know, you have marriage problems and you don't know why when everything is going well. So I talk about all I talked about all those things last week and started really identifying, wow, if there is a part in my life where I am cursed because of something that my mother, grandmother, great grandmother, my ancestors did, I want to know it. I want to know it because I want to make sure that I am breaking those generational curses because I want to live my best life. How many of you guys want to live your best life? I know you do. I know you do. Some of you guys are listening to me. You're tired of being depressed. You're tired of being emotionally bowed down. You're tired of going from job to job. Tired of probably, you know, having financial issues. Tired of going through so many different things in your life. And you're trying to figure out how can I break out of this? And these series are to teach you exactly what you need to do to break out of all these things. I see so many people joining and I am so privileged that you guys are connected to me. And I feel so privileged because I think everybody somehow God connects them together, right? I, and a lot of the same people, Milton, God bless you. Christine, God bless you. Edwin, Yvette, all these people, I've been seeing them over and over again. I love it with my mom, with my sister, um, it's Kevin, Kaylin, so many people just joining in and I'm going to get excited. I'm going to get like super excited about what I'm, st I'm talking about here. Um, so I, I want to, I want to share all, all these things with you. Okay. All right. So seven things that I spoke about last week, which were, which are monumental. How do you identify, right? How do you the list? I talked about listing seven factors that lead me to conclude that I might be under a curse, a curse. And I'm going to share them really quickly. Um, and, and if you have some of those things, I want you to kind of write them down. Come prepared because you are here to learn. You are here to become a better version of yourself. You are here to learn what you need to do to have a blessed life. So some of these things, right? Uh, mental and emotional breakdown, repeated chronic sicknesses, female issues, um, talking about probably repeated miscarriages or problems with 
with your cycle or, or maybe being fertile. And some people also have that. Some men as well. Breakdown of marriages. You know, I was talking about what happened to me last year in the breakdown of marriages, which was really deep for me because it was kind of like I repeated that cycle. And in the book Prevail, The Process of Overcoming, that was one of the things that God guided me to start talking about breaking generational curses because although my goal to write this book was to talk about my mom and how she's living a blessed life today although she went through a time you know a life of turmoil she went through a life of of abuse over and over but she was able to overcome that and i wanted to share that with the world because i felt it was going to be effective and it was but then the book evolved about talking about me and what happened automatically i started realizing wait a minute some of the things my mother went through, I went through too. You know, she went through a divorce. Now I'm going through the, the divorce. You know, I remember going into the court and saying, are you kidding me? Like, I never in my life thought that I would be going through a breakup in this type of magnitude. And here I am going into um, a, a, a divorce court to get a divorce. That was breakage. That was that was a, a, a death to me. You know, they compare um, divorce to a death. I mean, I went through such a loss at that period of time where I was like, what did I do to deserve this? But then God started teaching me and he started guiding me and he started telling me, hey, let me take you through a different path. Let me show you that there's a better way to live. Let me let you know that you've been praying. You've been uh, uh, telling me since you were 13 years old that you wanted to marry someone that was keen to you, right? Like your soulmate, that it was a man of God. And here you are now, uh, almost probably nine months of marriage and I'm going through a divorce and I'm going and I'm telling myself what is going on I didn't do anything to deserve this and you know I want to tell you that maybe you are going through something like that where maybe you're going through a situation where you did nothing to deserve it maybe you're going through a situation where you feel what did I do to be here and God is going to tell you today and he's going to teach you today in some ways how to break out of that how you could break out of being through a generational curse. That's a big one for me. Okay, another one was financial insufficiency. And I did speak about this a little bit. And, um, you know, look at it in your, in your lineage. A lot of us, a lot of us that are listening to me today are called to break those generational curses of financial insufficiencies. A lot of us are. That's why you're connected to me. Because I'm not only a businesswoman, I'm not only an entrepreneur, right? I'm a child of God. I understand a little bit about money more than a lot of people in my family, in my lineage. You know, I found out, and this is deep, while talking to my grandmother today, first of all, I haven't seen my daughter join, but today is my daughter's birthday. Happy birthday, my love. But yesterday was my grandmother's birthday. She's 90 years old. And she, they tell me that I'm a little bit like her because she was very, very business oriented. And, you know, in her early 40s, she paid off her house. And here I am in my early 40s. I paid off my house. And it's just a lot of similarities in business. But um, I found out that some of my uncles were multimillionaires. I didn't know that till like when I started writing this book. And I told my mom, mom, why you never told me that? That some of my, my grandmother's uncles were multimillionaires and that they had businesses and that they had, um, 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 you know, factories and, and things in Puerto Rico and they lived well off financially because I always felt that I didn't want to live mediocre. You know, a lot of people and a lot of Christian people, a lot of people in general, they think that if you have money, you're not humble. That is such a lie of the devil. Okay, we live this life that we're living in now is financial. Everything you do in life has to 90%, if not 95% of it is finances. And if you don't have the finances, you cannot get those resources. We're not saying that, you know, yes, we understand that the love of money is the root of all evil. I get that. But you know what? Nobody's telling you to love the money. What we're telling you is that you have the ability to create wealth so that you could change the legacy of your family. You see, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 8, 18, you have been created, okay, to create wealth. You, you, have, the, you have been given the ability to create wealth. 
And we have to really vote. I'm not going to get into politics. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. But vote for values. Vote for are you going to be able to, to, to make money and, and really live in, in a free enterprise type of world? Or are you going to live under socialism? What do you choose? Whatever you vote for is what you're going to choose. You're going to choose socialism or you're going to choose free enterprise. And I believe that God has given us the ability to create wealth so that we could give back to the churches, so that we could give to the poor, so that we could be men and women of God. So when the orphan needs help, we could really help them. Could I get an amen, right? So when the widow comes and knocks in the church's door, we could give her them shelter. We could give her children shelter and food to eat. That's what we were created to do as children of God. But a lot of us have been stuck in a financial rut for a very long time. And I want to encourage you to finish listening to this four-part series of Breaking Through Generational Curses. Because maybe, just maybe, just maybe, you need to make a prayer over your life over your family's life, so you could get to that next level in your financial life. How many of you say amen? I mean, how many of you don't want to live paycheck to paycheck? How many of you want to wake up in the morning and say, I don't need to worry about money. Let me take care of the people in my family. Let me take care of my children. Let me be able to give to the poor. Let me be able to, to really reach out to people because God gave me the ability to, to create wealth. And I am going to be able to help others that are in need. But you know, there are families that have been cursed with financial insufficiencies. Do you make six figures but still can uh, 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 meet your bills? Maybe there's something there. Do you make a good income but you're still living paycheck to paycheck? You still cannot pay the light at the end of the month. Start thinking about those things. Yes, we need to learn how to deal with money. That's 100%. We need to learn how to do certain things with money. And we need to stop spending money when we don't need to spend it. Okay? But if you're going through something like that and you don't find a, a, a solution for it, maybe it's a generational curse. Okay? Number six was accident prone. Number six was accident prone. You know what's funny? So... <laughs> My daughter, she is very active for you, you guys that know her. She's beautiful. She's eight years old. We always have to put her do, to do something. And I love it. I love it because, you know, I, I, I'd rather her be like that. I'd rather her be open to, to learning new things and, and then kind of sitting in a couch doing nothing all day. And she came to the house a few times. She came to the house a few times. This is the importance of knowledge, right? The Bible says that people perish, people perish because of lack of knowledge. So when I started studying this about accident prone, there's been a couple of days that my daughter comes home and she has scratches in her knees and in her elbows. And, you know, the nurse is calling me and she fell and, you know, and, and, you know, that's a normal thing for kids. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, not everything that, that you're going through is a curse. And that, that was one of the things that I also spoke about last week was the, the Holy Spirit has to guide you on what it is for you. So you have to pay attention. Okay, you need to tell, ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord, Lord, is this something that I really have to look into a little bit further? Or, or you know, is this something that I have to stand in the gap for my family to be able to break those generational curses? Because you have the authority. The Bible says that he has given you the authority to step on skirts scorpions and serpents and the bible says that none of it will harm you you have the ability to step on the uh, 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 on those demons that are attacking you and your family you have the authority to step on those things that are trying to stop you from becoming the better version of yourself to, uh, of becoming the blessed life uh, uh, of having that blessed life that god wants you to have you have the authority if you just grab onto it okay so um, accident prone, going back to accident prone, um, my, my daughter was coming back with broken knee. I'm not broken knee, God forbid, but scratched knee, elbow and everything else. And I'm praying over her. So after I gave, uh, the study last week, after I gave the study last week, um, I'm, I'm walking right. Her school, uh, the blessing of God, her school is right across the street from us. And I'm walking and I, I started breaking any curses of accident prone. 
if you're one of these people that are always getting hurt for like no reason, if somebody's going to slam the door, it's going to be on your hand. You know, think about that. If you're going through those um, accident prone, I know it's funny, but for some people, all the time I talk to them, they're in the hospital for something different. Like really, why are you again? You're in the hospital again. So start thinking about those things. And we're going to teach you today how to break those generational curses. Number seven was a spirit of suicide of unnatural deaths. Okay. And one of the explanations I gave was uh, the Kennedy family. If you just look up history, it's incredible. If you just look up history, all of them either died in a plane crash, car crash, some type of suicide, some type of, you know, um, accident, something that's very, that, that you want to make sure you're standing in the gap for your family. Okay. Uh, suicidal thoughts, everybody, they don't want to live. They're tired of living all of those things. I really need you to start thinking about this because, because today God wants to give you a blessed life. Okay. I want to welcome everybody that's joining. I am so blessed. I see Gina. I see Ephraim. I see Glenda, Lisette, all these people that are joining. God bless you, Ashley. Um, you know, I just so blessed to see all these people, Ronnie, Edwin, John, God bless you, Lucas, uh, so many people that are joining. And the reason why I want you to understand why I'm here is because God has chosen me to be in your path. Whatever that means, God has chosen me to be in your path so that you could become better. So let's get to today. Still talking about breaking through generational curses. So, you know, you start studying this stuff and you get like antsy, like, oh my God, how many curses are there? You know, am I one of them? I, I want to break them. What do I have to do? Tell me, tell me, tell me. And I am, and I'm going to tell you, but I want to tell you that most generational curses stem from two things, two things, write them down, two things. Usually they're the first two commandments that God spoke about in Exodus. One, acknowledge your God. With all you do, right? Acknowledge your God. You should not acknowledge, acknowledge any other God, but the God above. You should not acknowledge any other God, but the God, the true God. Think about that. Think about other religions. Think about other people that put um, the tree as a God or the universe as a God or, um, um, you know, uh, uh, the people as gods or I'm a God, I'm the universe. Um, okay. Think about that. Think, and think about their lives. Think about where they're at in their life. Are they living a blessed life? Number one, I'm talking about, um, the first two commandments. Number one, you should not acknowledge any other God, but your God. And number two, idolatry. Look at what it says in Deuteronomy 27, 15. And I want to share this. I want to read this. Deuteronomy 27, 15. Cursed is anyone who made an idol, a thing detestable to the Lord, the work of skilled hands and set it up in secret. Then all the people shall say amen whenever you go to a source indeed of going to God. I know I'm going to step on some people's toes here. But let me talk about idolatry. Let's talk about going to fortune, fortune tellers. You know, everything, everything, this world, they commercialize it, right? They commercialize it. Easter is about the bunny. Um, you know, Christmas is about Santa Claus and every other holiday that they put right now, Halloween, very scary for a lot of people. If you start studying Halloween, be careful when you go out there. I know we have co uh, commercialized it. We want the kids to dress up cute and that's all cute. Just be careful. I tell Justin, I, I tell Jalen all the truth about Halloween, how, you know, there are true witches out there that they really want to harm children, that there's things out there that are real. And a lot of us walk around blinded. A lot of us walk around thinking, oh, it's just that I can't get out of this rut. No, it's maybe that you're not following God the way he's asking you to follow him. It's maybe because you're going to fortune tellers so that they could tell you your future instead of going to God so that he can tell you the future. You see, God is the only 
only one that can that that can guide you to where you need to be. He's the only one that can share where what you need to do and how close you need to be with God and why you're going through the situations you're going through. There's not going to be no fortune teller, no Ouija board. Um, you know, think about that. Think about that Ouija board. That's something you could get in the regular Toys R Us. Well, Toys R Us is not around, but Ouija board, right? When you look it up, I looked it up. I googled it. And they were saying, oh, you know, this is not witchcraft. This is not any of that. You know, it, it's fine. It's just, it's just a, 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 it's just a game. But I always understood that when you start calling into the, the, the evil ones, just like there's a God, there's just like there's good, there's evil. Just like there's a God, there's a devil. I'm sorry. I'm here to tell you the truth. And I know you might not believe that, but I want to encourage you today. You know, research on your own. Do your own research. Learn on your own if this is what I should be believing, if this is what I should be doing. If you're going to a carnival and they have a fortune teller, you should not be going in there to see if you're going to get a boyfriend tomorrow. All right? Do what you need to do. God has your man. God has your woman. Okay? He got your back. You, when you start consulting other people instead of the one true God, you open up doors to come into your life that are not supposed to be there. I'm going to tell you a quick story about the Ouija board, okay? I have to tell you, when I was in high school, so I went to fashion industries in the city, and almost all my schooling was in the city. And I remember being in 11th grade, and I love fashion. Um, I always wanted to be a model and, 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 you know, walk down, but I was number one. I was too short. Back then, I was skinny enough. Hallelujah. We're, we're going to be getting there. Um, but I always wanted to go down the aisle. I couldn't. They didn't have fatigue back there, okay? But um, I have to tell you, they invited me to go down to the lockers, okay? Listen to this. A couple of my friends invited me to go down to the lockers and to go play with the Ouija board. And I knew, I, I, I knew what I heard in the church. Um, I, I had asked my mother about it. I knew that, that that was involving witchcraft. And I know some people might say, oh, no, no, it's not. It's, it's not, you know, it, it, it's not that. Okay, that's fine. But let me tell you this. Last, when um, I, I decided not to go down to the, to the locker rooms and play Ouija board. They went, they play Ouija board. Two days later, and I didn't even put this, this is God reminding me. I mean, I went to high school, oh my God, 30 years ago, okay? And God is reminding me what I'm studying here. Two days later, I'm in my fashion industries class, and a counselor comes in with the principal and another teacher. And we're like, oh God, something happened, or we're going to do something, or you know, whatever. Um, they're going to escort somebody out. They spoke to us that one of the ladies, one of the girls that was probably 15, 16 years old that was doing the Ouija board committed suicide. She had gone up to the building, threw herself out the building. I had just seen her two days ago. She was one of the girls that was playing around just a regular game board, as they say. It's a regular game board. Playing around with the Ouija board. And... As I'm studying this, God reminded me of that story and reminded me that we need to be careful what we give our children. We need to be careful what friends we hang around with and what, what they do because a lot of times they, they just want to try it. Oh, I saw this in the movie. I want to try it. You know, I, I, some of my friends was talking about it. Let's, let's try it. Let, let, let's just dap into it. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if the Ouija board moves on its own. Let's see if this does happen, if the glass moves or whatever it is that you're doing. And what you're inviting and what you're doing is that you're putting a God outside of what God said. He told us not to get into witchcraft. He told us not to do that stuff because it is evil and because it is going to interrupt our relationship with God. When you talk about, when you start reading the word of God and the people of Israel, okay, and as many times as that, they stopped looking towards God. All the time, they will put other gods outside of the God of Israel, which is Jesus Christ, right? All the time they did that, they were cursed. If you read the word of God, 
Even if you just read the Old Testament, if I have some Muslims listening to me today, if I have some people that maybe they're not into the New Testament, they're just into the Old Testament, right? Um, um, some Jewish people, if you read all the time, they uh, 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 put other gods in front of God, they were cursed, were cursed with sicknesses. They were cursed with people, you know, fighting their battle, taking their territory, and today, God is calling me to tell you that that territory that he has promised you, if you just stand in the gap for all those generational curses that probably your ancestors did, maybe you are going to get that territory that God has given you. Maybe the promise that God has been telling you that he's going to give you, that he will, because God is a God that does not lie. If he told you he's going to do something, he will do it. I want you to understand that maybe you need to go back. Was there any Satanism in your family? Was there any witchcraft in your family? Was there any, you know, um, brujeria for, for my Spanish speaking people? Was there any brujeria, satanismo, all this stuff? In, uh, that's a lot, you know, um, a lot of, a, a lot of people. I, I know for my husband, we were talking about it and I was saying, Hey babe, you know, um, I, I know your father passed away and I, I, I know a lot of, you know, uh, your family members, they were very open about doing brujeria very open about it we started praying about it standing in the gap maybe this is why we're stuck in certain areas maybe this is what god is trying to do so that 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 promise so that a uh, prophecy or what god has told us in the bible that he's gonna give us overwhelmingly right till our cup overflows maybe that's why we're not there yet because we have to go back and ask God to forgive the sins of, 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 of our ancestors, of our fathers, of our grandparents, of our great grandparents, so that we can be free. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you are at fault for what's happened in the past. That is not what I'm saying. You are not at fault. I am just giving you knowledge. I'm giving you the knowledge that you need so that you can become the best, best, um, um, blessed. You could become blessed. Okay, so you could become the best version of yourself which is what i talk about all the time look at this number one false gods number two idolatry number three think about this so now i'm talking about uh, uh, other things that um you know uh, 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 uh seven different ways that uh that people kind of are cursed to di different areas and usually it's the commandments when you go against the commandments of God. All right. Number three is a big one. And I believe this, this respecting of parents. I have never, ever seen someone prosper in their lives to their fullest. If they don't have a relationship with their parents or they disrespect their parents or they talk back to their parents or they, they are always bickering with their parents or, or they, they talk bad about what their parents are doing and stuff like that because their parents will never want to harm you. Now, I understand sometimes there are parents that have done things that have harmed you. I get it. Okay, but the Bible says, right, honor your father and your mother. Ephesians 6, 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. So that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Think about that. Stop talking back. Stop. You could be 25 and still talking back to your mother. Okay, she knows best for you. Your mother, your, your father knows best for you. Now, I understand there are certain situations when you get older that you're going to make that. Maybe your parents are not 100% for, but it doesn't mean you should disrespect them. Okay, it doesn't mean you should disrespect them. All right, so I'm going to stop here because I think disrespecting of parents is really big. Could I share a story with you guys? I was already older and I, I'm, I'm being a super transparent in the story. You guys are going to love it. Okay, but I'm being super transparent. I was already older. I had, just, I had gotten a divorce already. My baby, Justin, which is her birthday today. I love you, baby, if you're listening to me. Um, I was actually very emotional today because it's the first birthday that I've had without my baby girl because um, she's in college, but she's doing great things. Second year of college, overcoming obstacles, being the best that she can be. I love you, baby. But I was, I, Justin, was two years old 
And I'm talking about disrespecting your parents. I don't think I ever told this to even my mom, but I know she's listening. And I was already uh, uh, probably about to be 30 or, or 30 already. Because Justin was about two. I had her when I was about 28. And the, um, the, the, the situation is that I wanted to live my life, right? If you read the book, you, you read about me. I was a church girl, but I wasn't a church girl too, okay? And I wanted to figure out what it was to go clubbing and do that. And oh my God, I want to figure out what, what it is, that life. And it's such a joke. I mean, you go clubbing, you see the same people there all the time. You, if you go there for five years, you're going to see the same people there. It is horrible. I don't know how people do it all the time. I, I get it. A 40-year-old man sitting there trying to rap to young girls. I mean, really? Like, get a life, you know? <laughs> that's, that's just a sign note. So I was, um, I had met actually my husband that is today for 13 years. And uh, Justine was already three years old. And my mother had just started her church. She was telling me, Gina, come to church, come to church, do this, do that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, mommy, you know, I had just started a job and I was making money and, and I was trying to get back on my feet. Because if you read my book, I was broke, dead broke, busted and disgusted. My, my credit score was like at 300. I mean, I was left with nothing, with nothing. Um, my car was being rep repossessed. I finally had gotten a job and I had met this guy. Now, I met the guy. We were together for a few months. And, you know, my mother was kind of like, so what are you thinking of doing? And, and this and that. You know, my, my parents always told us kind of like, you know, you find a guy, you get married. You know, you're not going to fool around. So when I met Jay, um, we were very friendly. He was super friendly with my daughter, which was, which was big for me. And I'm going to get to the story, I promise, which was super big for me. But I... Um, started dating him and I was an adult right I wanted to do me I was already 30 31 maybe 32 and I was like well you know I'm, I'm living the life he has his own apartment and oh my god he's doing so good and you know cute guy muscular um very you know I was like forget it I was up here and my mother started her church and she felt in her spirit that I was living a life of sin guess what she was right I was living a life of sin. I was in the world. I was figuring out a way, you know, oh, mommy, I'm going now. Watch Destiny. I'll be back. And, you know, this and that and the other. And um, at the time, I was like, well, that, that's what is expected of me. So I'm going to live a life of sin because that's what God wants. And I'm not in church. And I really wasn't valuing myself. Really, that's the, that's the goal. When you're out there in the world, you don't value yourself. You know, you, you, you give it up so quickly you you do things that a guy should wait for value yourself okay but at that moment i wasn't there i wasn't there i knew what it was to value myself in church okay i got married i i, I waited till i got married but then i wasn't there anymore i was rebellious i i was like i want to do me so my mother said you know you gotta you gotta see what you're gonna do because i'm not gonna have that in my house you guys know what i'm talking about I was doing me, okay? I'm not going to have fornication in my house. I'm not going to have adultery in my house. I'm not going to have any of that in my house because I'm a woman of God. And in this house, you know, in esta casa se respeta. All right, I said, okay, that's fine. I'm going to wait for my taxes. I'm going to get my own place. I've always had money, you know, thank God I've always supported myself. I've always learned how to, you know, I got myself out of $50,000 worth of debt. My credit score went up to 800. I, I did me. I was like, uh-uh, I am not going to get stuck. I am not going to be cursed. I will give my child everything that she needs. And she was my burning. The, the, she was my why, why I had to get up and do me. I was not going to get stuck for no man or no anybody. So I said, okay, he got his own place. I'm going to go get my own place. I remember being so disrespectful to my mom i didn't want to lose my relationship with my mom because you know my mother's my best friend she's she's everything to me and she's my counselor she's my pastor so i moved out i moved out i got my own place it was beautiful justin had her first room for the first time i had my own room could i tell you that in that apartment i know somehow i was cursed 
because I left my house disrespecting my mother. Okay? And I'm going to tell you why I know that. My car was stolen. They stole into my apartment. They stole my tires. They stole my rear windows. <laughs> they, um, I ended up finding my car destroyed. I didn't want to sleep in that apartment. I was paying, I was paying over, I don't even know, it was like $1,500 um, a month in rent for a two bedroom um, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. Okay, for me, that was a lot. I was a single woman. I was taking care of myself. But everything I did was in spite of what my mother was telling me. Although, although I was already an adult and I could do whatever I want, I said, you know what? I'm going to go do me. And I started realizing I need to live a life according the, to the way that God wants me to live it in order for me to tap into having a blessed life. I don't know if you're listening to me today. I don't know if this is impacting you today. But there might be people that are listening to me that you need to stop that lifestyle. You know, that lifestyle ain't getting you anywhere. You might be in your 30s, in your 40s, and you think you're an adult, and you might be an adult. But you know what? Sin always has consequences. I went, I, I, I lived in my house. I didn't, want, I didn't want Jay to come move in with me because I had my daughter there. But we were still living a life of sin. And I had to deal with a lot of things that were not of God. And God did not want me to go through because I was scheming. Because I wasn't listening to my mom. Can I tell you another thing? A lot of times we want to be blessed financially, but we're cheating in our taxes. But we're cheating. We, t we say that our car is, is in one state when it's really in another. I'm going to tell you another quick story. And I feel that this is of God for somebody that's out here today because God wants to bless you. He wants to take you to another level in your life financially, but you're still scheming. When I went to live in Florida, you know that insurance in Florida is a lot cheaper. When I went to, to uh, I got my car, I came to New York, and I said that my car was still in Florida. I was, I was living a cheaper car. Somebody got to give me a thumbs up because I know somebody here could relate to what I'm saying. Or could share this with somebody so that it could impact them. Don't forget to share this. Share it. Share it. Share it. Okay? Do a watch party. Do what you have to do. I see some people, are they're doing a watch party. Okay, on Facebook. And I want I was like, well, if I pay insurance in Florida, it's gonna be twelve hundred dollars a month. If I bring it to New York, I'm gonna be paying uh two thousand dollars a month. And I'm I'm being rough around the edges with the with the amount I don't remember, but I knew I know that it was a lot more. Guess what? When they stole my car in New York, I said my car was in Florida. So what did they do? They came to investigate in my house where the car was. The, the guy from the insurance guy, of course, because they don't want to pay. He was like, listen, you look like such a nice guy, such a nice girl. Your apartment is beautiful. You're a single mom. You have your daughter here. What's going on? We want to pay this insurance claim, but the car was stolen here. And it looks like you live here. I had to come clean. I said, I did live in Florida. I'm, I, I didn't get an insurance in Florida. I was still lying. I did live in Florida. When I got the insurance, it was in Florida. But it was my duty to switch my insurance from Florida to New York when I moved. And I did it. Guess what happened? I had to pay the insurance claim. So all that money that I saved on insurance, I had to pay it all back to get my car back to a state. And it was a brand new car. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a Nissan Pathfinder from, from the box. There's a lot of us that want to be blessed in our health, in our finances, in our families, but we want to scheme. We want to do things that God doesn't approve of. We married and we filing taxes separate. Why? Why you do that? And you're, you're wondering why you can't pay your light bill every single month. You know, do things right so that God can bless you in everything that you do. Do things right. And, and, and I just hope from God to share that because a lot of us are stuck. A lot of us are stuck in, 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 in these type of, you know, uh, 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 arenas in our life. And we think is that, that, that God doesn't want to bless us. And the reality is, is that God wants to bless you. The thing is, are you doing the right thing so that you could get out of those curses that are gonna, that not, that are not gonna allow you to be blessed? This is really exciting. Okay. 
So I, I want you to understand there's so many, more, so many much more, okay, that we need, that I want to share with you. Another thing that I want to share with you that's deep is being stingy towards God. A lot of times we are in a financial rut because we're not givers. I want you to understand that. We're not givers. And you know, I know there's a big controversy about giving tithes. And I know there's been, you know, priests, pastors, rabbis, whatever, that take the money and they do the wrong things with it. You know, but I want you to understand that when you start serving God, it is huge to give. It is huge to give to the needy. It is huge to be, a, 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 how do you call that when you give all the time? A philanthropist. Okay. When people start making a lot of money, that's what they do. And the reason why they have a lot of money, the reason why they keep on having a lot of money is because they give. So it is important for you to realize that giving is so important. Look at what it says in Malachi. And th this is something that will curse you if you do not give and if you do not give to God. It says, Malachi 3, 8, 10. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are, you, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Look at what it says here. Bring the whole tithes into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. For those that are saying, man, I, I feel like I can't get to the next level in my finances. And see if I would not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing. Wow. That there will not be no room enough to store it. Listen, I know Malachi was in the law. I get it. Okay. I know some people are going to say, oh, you know, churches rob money. I get it. Okay. But let me tell you, when you're in grace, it talks about giving more than receiving. Right. Grace can make us more generous. Then the law can make us. So when we in the New Testament, we in the grace. I could tell you testimony after testimony of me giving and me being able to have the home that I have now. Me being able to, with my husband, being able to pay off my mortgage, being able to, to, to bless others that are in need, being able to bless the church, being able to pray to the Lord and ask him, God, tell me where is it that I need to give? Because I want to give in fertile ground. I want to give in a place where it's going to give me back in return. And I promise you that God has taught me, even in times that people have asked and told me, don't give. Because that's not fertile ground. But you need to have a, a life in the spirit. You need to have a life with God. So that you could identify that in your mind and say, hey, you know, what is it that I need to do in order for me to give the best of me? And when I say money, I also say time. When you give, giving time. Are you giving God the time or do you give it in the video games? Do you give it in the soap uh, opera or do you give it on Facebook? Do you give it on Instagram? Do you give it or do you, are you giving guy 10% of your time daily? Are you talking to him? Are you giving to him? Because let me tell you something. He wants to bless you. It says here, oh, and I got to say it again because, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. How many of you guys want that blessing? Can I get a thumbs up? I want that blessing. Can I get a high five? Who wants that blessing? Everybody wants the blessing. But I have to tell you, even me not serving God. So if there's people here, that are listening to me, that maybe are not, you know, oh, I don't go to church, so I won't give tithe, or I won't give here or there. When my mother started her ministry, I always had a passion of giving, always. I love Christmas. If you ever pass by my house, my house looks fly. I'm excited for Christmas because I like to decorate. Um, and, you know, I know that is a simulation uh, 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 of Christmas. I know Jesus wasn't actually born in December. Okay, don't write me any letters. But I love to celebrate it. I love it. I love to celebrate. I love to give. I love to, my, my sister says, you're like the Santa Claus of the family. You know, when we have our, our, our um, get-togethers, our family get-togethers, I give everybody a gift. I'm not about grab bag. I'm not about, I don't know if that's going to happen this year, right? But I, I love to give. I love to give to my family, to my children, to my mom, to my dad, to everybody that's around. 
But it's so important for you to understand that the kingdom at hand, the kingdom right now will only grow if you give. Don't pay your bills first, then pay your tithes. Pay your tithes first, then pay your bills. I promise you. The Bible says, try me in this and you will see that I will bless you. It will overflow. You know, when the Bible talks about that, I will open, I will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be no room enough to store it. When you, when you study that verse, he's talking about, it's going to overflow so much like it overflowed in Noah's ark, that the water overflowed so much that everybody died. Obviously everybody knows that story. If not, look it up in Genesis, right? There was so much water that it overflowed. Just, it overflowed. That's the way God wants to bless you. So when my mother opened up her, her, her church, I wasn't going to church. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't serving God. I was doing me. I was living a life of sin. I was, I was enjoying carnal pleasures, <laughs> okay? Um, and uh, temporarily, because, because uh, that's how they are. Those pleasures are temporary, but the pleasure of God, the joy of God is eternal. That, that's what I want to get to today. The joy of God is eternal. So my mom started the church and she was in a 40 day fast, 40 day fast. And she was trying to pray and she, she wasn't trying to pray. She was praying and she was saying, God confirm to me, please confirm to me if, if I'm supposed to start this church. And I remember getting my first check and I was excited because I was a social worker and I was broke. I love you if you're a social worker, but you make no money. At least not the way I want to live. So I started, I started working for the company that I am now almost 16 years later. And I started making money, man. I, I, I treated that job as a business. I was six figures, you know, plus, 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 plus doing what I had to do, um, you know, and, and I was paying off my bills, my debt. But before all that happened... I said, wait, I, I got to step it up. I have to give my tithes, although I'm not going to a church. So the first thing that came to my mind was like, hey, my mother is going to church, it started a church. Let me give her my first tithes. When I went up to my mother, she was finishing her 40 day fast. She started crying as I gave her the envelope and I told her, these tithes belong to a pastor and you are my pastor. Here you go. My mother started crying and received confirmation from God that she was supposed to start her church. Why do I talk about this? Because a lot of people relate to money. A lot of re people relate to trying to get out of that negativity. You know what? It's time for you to stop with the handouts. I know some people excited. Oh, you know, wow, I got section A. I'm excited. That's good if you're in that stage. But God wants to give you better than that. If you're not sick, you should not be getting welfare. You should get that if you need it. If you don't need it, you should be working. You should be starting a business. You should be doing something to be able to create wealth as God created us to do. And part of that is giving. And sometimes because we don't give and we're stingy with our money, we cannot grow. The, the, the ground is fertile right in front of us. And we're not giving and we're not growing. We need to give very very, very important to do so. I want you to understand also, I started realizing, you know, that when people see that you're doing well, they want to ask you for money all the time. Okay. And they want to, oh, Gina, Gina, I need this. Or they come to you crying or this happened, this happened. So I started praying to God because I do love to give. And, you know, um, I'm a sucker for a sad story. You tell me the story, I'm, 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 I'm in. There was this one individual that, that came to me or, or came to my mom that she was going through issues. And God told me, this is not a fertile ground. Do not give there. Because when I say I gave, I'm, I'm going to give you a thousand dollar check. I'm going to give you, you know, whatever God puts in my heart. And as I'm getting my checkbook, God is telling me, don't do it. Forward two or three days later, I realized that that woman was trying to scam us and she wasn't doing the right thing with the money that the church was giving her. Because my mother is, she has a very giving church. And I just want to tell you that a way to overcome and breaking, breaking the curse 
of lack is giving. I'm going to tell you that next week, I'm going to have a special guest, okay? And I'm excited. She was actually going to be down here, but she's not going to be. And I am going to be sharing my sister with you. And we're going to talk about generational curses in a clinical aspect. What do the doctors say? What do the psychologists say? What do the psychiatrists say about generational curses? Because this is not just biblical, okay? I mean, everything originates from the Bible. But there's other avenues that people can tell you what you're going through. And I'm so excited to share her with you. She's actually almost finished with her PhD in marriage counseling. I don't have all her stats here, but she is amazing. She's my role model. She's my older sister. I've always followed her. I always, I always been her tail. And um, I think when she went to Florida, I was actually able to shine because I wasn't her tail anymore. Um, not in a bad way. I, I didn't mind being her tail. I was her younger sister. And every younger sister wants to be like the older sister. Um, and... I'm going to share her with you guys. I don't want you guys to miss this because every single thing we're talking about, we're going to share with you how to overcome it. Just like I share with you one tip today, how to overcome lack. The last episode, I'm going to share prayers with you. And, and once you identify these curses and once you identify, maybe this is in my family. Maybe you got to have a talk with your mom or your mother with your grandmother with, with your father. Maybe you need to have a talk. Hey, did we go through this in our home? Did, did these things happen? And maybe you need to identify those things so that you can live your blessed life. You can live the better version of yourself because that's where God wants you to be. And I want you to understand that where God is taking you, no man can stop it. Where God is taking you, no, no, no problem, no situation, no nothing can stop you from accomplishing the work that God wants you to do. And now nothing can stop the promises that God has already declared over your life. And you know who they are. There's no anxiety. There's no depression. There, there's no suicidal thoughts. Come on now. There's no uh, 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 any type of accident prone in your life. Nothing. Any financial deficiency that could stand in your life so you could become who God has created you to be so that you could enter into the destiny that God wants you to be. Let me tell you something, man. You're always going to go through struggles. You're always going to go through pain. But when you could identify different areas in your life and you could say, you know what, this, I, I kicked this in the butt. No, 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 no. This is a curse. I'm going to stand in the gap. I rebuke you. You're not going to control me anymore. I will overcome this curse. I will be who God created me to be. And when you know, because the Bible says that, that people perish because of the lack of knowledge, now you are getting that knowledge so that you can can go and you can start confessing. No, no, no. I'm not going to curse myself anymore. I'm not going to start telling things to myself that are going to create these curses. And let me tell you, a lot of us do. And that's another thing that I wanted to share. And we're going to go through a little bit more next. Um, We're going to go through a little bit, you know, next week. Things that you tell yourself, that you curse yourself. Things that you say, I'm not good enough. I'm insecure. Um, I, I, I could never get there. You know, I, I could never um, uh, um, get that job or start that business. Or uh, Let me tell you, everything I'm doing. And you could tell the people in my team, the people that I work with, I always say I'm scared, I'm nervous, I'm insecure because I'm entering into a realm that, that, is, that, that I've never done before. I've never done lies before. I've never written a book before. I've never done this. But I said, God, I surrender to you. I give you everything that I am. And it's not easy. But let me tell you something. When you have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, it is work. Yes, it, 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 it takes focus. It takes you to gather. It takes money. It takes a lot of things for you to get to where you're at. But when you're doing the will of God and you know it within your heart, within your soul, in your spirit, God is going to back you up in everything you do, 100%. And it's so great. The, the greatness of God is over me. I'm, I'm so grateful for what God is doing in my life and in your life. But I want to tell you something. Next week, I don't want you to miss it with my sister. I don't know how we're going to do it. She was supposed to be live. She's not going to be live anymore. But we'll, we'll join. We're, we're going to figure it out in Instagram and Facebook. But I, I want you to understand that there's a way for you to be blessed. Listen, share this. Share it. Share it with people. Share it with your family members. Tell them, listen, there's a way for us to be blessed. Listen to this. Not because it's me, but because I'm sharing the word of God. 
You know, there's different flat platforms that you could follow me in. If you're on Instagram, I prevail the book at Janari Arcecado. If you're on Twitter, Janari Arcecado. If you're on YouTube, Janari Arcecado. Come on now. If you're in all these platforms, follow me. Share it to people. Let them know. I have a podcast that comes out every single Tuesday called The Prevail Point. Every single Tuesday. I'm working on it now. I missed this week. It's going to come out. Um, I, I have some little trans transactions and, and, and some different things that are going on that I lost the person that was doing my, my podcast but God is providing but let me tell you the, the podcast the lives on Wednesday so many things you know Crown Media helping me with so many areas in my life and other teams that are helping me there's different things I'm opening up I'm working with, um, you know, I don't know if she's on here, but I'm working with Synergy Networks for the people that, that know that are Christian and that are not. If you're not, you should follow them. They have so many different programs that could help you, that could help you network. They want me to start working with them in the author, in, 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 the, in the author page and, and start doing some promotions and, and, and just, you know, they have a network of over a hundred thousand people on Facebook and just God opening doors everywhere. But if I didn't step out on faith, and this is what I'm trying to tell you. If you identify these curses, if you know what's limiting you, then you can live a life with no limits. You can live a life with no limits. This is what I'm talking to you about. You can live a life with no limits. And I want to bless you today. I want you to understand that there's so much more in your life that you can. I don't know what happened on Facebook. I, I think I lost them. Um, don't know what happened with, my, with, 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 with the phone. <laughs> But I want to tell you, it's okay. It's okay. I want you to live a life with no limits. And in order to do that, you need to identify what's stopping you. And probably a generational curse might be one of it. It might not be, but it might be. But I want to bless you today. I want you to understand, and last week I gave these um, verses. Last week I gave these verses. And um, I, 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 I want to give them to you again. It's, it's in uh, Galatians, um, Galatians 3, 13 and 14. I want to I wanna give these uh, 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 lessons to you um, because I want you to understand that there is a way out. And it's very simple. Giving your heart to God and surrendering is a part of overcoming those generational curses. I want you to understand uh, 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 in Galatians 3, 13, 14, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung in the, on a pole, which is a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessed, the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. God bless you all. I am so happy that you shared with me. We are going to see if we can save this and probably put it on Facebook. If you lost me, we will get there. Um, but I'm so blessed to have each and every one of you in my life. I'm so blessed. So many people have joined us. And I am here if you need me. The me. Okay. So many people said happy birthday to Jessany. Thank you, guys. Um, and, uh, you know, just a lot of people have joined. Um, I know Facebook is looking for me. I will go back live on Facebook once I'm done here. And I love you guys. I think you are chosen to follow me. And not just to follow me, but to follow God and his word. God bless you all. Again, you can follow me on all my social media. We have Prevail the Book in IG, Janari Arcecado in IG. Um, Twitter, Janari Arcecado, YouTube. You could catch up on all of the remainder of the episodes. You could start from episode one all the way to episode 11. Um, the Prevail Point every Tuesday. You could uh, subscribe in Anchor, in Spotify, or in, um, in Spotify, Anchor, or Apple. You can subscribe and you will not miss an episode. We're up to episode 27 and episode 28 will air this week. God bless you. I am excited to share with you guys. Next week, do not miss it. Next week with my sister, Janalee Garay. She's getting her PhD. She has her master's already um, in, uh, uh, you know, psychology and 
and um, marriage counseling and she's a counselor right now in a school and she got so many knowledge so much knowledge that she wants to share with you god bless you and talk to you guys next week bye good job hey hold, hold down my mic